This video is a brief outline of the book The China Model, Political Meritocracy and Limits of Democracy written by Daniel Bell. Political meritocracy. China is not that bad so far anyway. Serve the political community. They shouldn't serve their own interests. And if they're corrupt, then obviously they're not virtuous. Let's give exams to politicians, not to voters. If the, we can vote one size fits all, we need different ways of choosing leaders at different levels. And that's more or less the Chinese model. We will explain sequentially the main points of the four chapters of the book and provide some interesting facts and ideas which impressed us the most. The main goal of the book is defense of political meritocracy. Thus, the author tries to explain what is meritocracy. We set the goal of the video to explain the title of the book, The China Model. Let's start with the key term that we are discussing. Meritocracy is the idea that political power should be distributed in accordance with virtue and ability. Going further to the content of the book, the narrative of the book is the following. The first chapter provides the comparison between meritocracy, the system of non-democratic selection of political leaders, here you can see the symbol for meritocracy, and democracy, the system of elections based on the principle of one person, one vote. Here you can see the symbol for democracy. The chapter discusses four key flaws of democracy. The tyranny of majority, the tyranny of the minority, the tyranny of the voting community, and the tyranny of competitive individualists. Then it provides some meritocratic alternatives that are practiced in China and Singapore as solutions to these problems. The author concludes that some meritocratic mechanisms can be a remedy for electoral democracy. Now, we need to point out the interesting issue that Daniel Bell mentions. The tyranny of the majority is the most serious problem in the biggest electoral democracy in the world, the USA. The essence of this disadvantage is the following. Irrational and self-interested majorities acting through democratic process can oppress educated and rational minorities and enact bad policies. The general characteristic of the majority is bias. It is unbelievable how biased modern people are. The author provides a great amount of data with researches that examined different biases. There is the strangest one. A 2009 poll of likely voters in New Jersey found that 8% of them believe that Barack Obama is antichrist. What? The discussion of the tyranny of competitive individualists, which can escalate political and social conflicts leads the author to the definition of a good political leader. In the second chapter, the author discusses the advantages of meritocracy and suggests how to maximize them. He explains the ability of good political leaders and institutional mechanisms to select them. Rulers should be selected according to merit or worthiness. And here you can see the symbol of merit. Plato gives us definition of the word merit. Merit, according to Plato, is the superior ability to make morally and informed political judgments. What are the components of the merit? The first and the most important is virtue. The second one is social skills. And the last one is intellectual ability. However, Daniel Bell says that the importance of each characteristic can be evaluated according to circumstances, such as time and place. The main instrument to evaluate these capacities and thus identify political merit is examination system. And the symbol of the examination system you can see here. Also, we need to emphasize the collaborative approach which the author uses in this chapter. Daniel Bell explains his ideas using the theories of most famous and influential philosophers such as Plato, Aristotle, John Stuart Mill and Alexis de Tocqueville. Then he suggests how to implement these ideas in practice in Chinese context, large, peaceful and modernizing political meritocracy characterized by collective 
leadership. But there are some problems in functioning of the system which should be alleviated or solved. Thus, the next chapter discusses the methods how to minimize the disadvantages of the system. The third chapter discusses three key problems of political meritocracy that threaten its existence and suggests possible remedies. These problems are corruption, classification of political hierarchies and the problem of legitimacy. There are different types of corruption. One type is the practice when political decisions are made according to human relations or to wealth. There is a specific term for this. You can see the symbol of Guanxi. The most dangerous for the system is the type called Mai Guan, buying a government post. The most serious problem is the problem of legitimacy. The point is that it is difficult to morally justify the existence of meritocratic government without democratic mechanisms. Now, we need to explain the interesting and complex example that the author uses to describe the problem of ossification. Daniel Bell uses the example of selecting students for studying in the National School of Administration in France. It shows that the concepts that are discussed in the book are applicable in various situations, in different contexts, not only in China. In the end of the third chapter, the author concludes that democracy may be necessary to legitimize meritocracy. Thus, the main question of the fourth chapter is how to reconcile political meritocracy and democracy. The last part discusses the benefits and the limitations of different models of democratic meritocracy. These models are democracy at the bottom, this model combines meritocracy and democracy at the level of the water, or, in other words, at the local level. Horizontal model. This is the system of the meritocracy and democracy at the top. This model aims to reconcile meritocracy and democracy at the level of the political institutions. Evergico model. This model can be described as meritocracy at the top and democracy at the bottom. The author proves that the first two systems are not possible to implement in the reality. The third vertical model is in fact the synthesis of first two systems and in Bell's opinion it is the best. The vertical model is actually functioning today in China. To illustrate the functioning of this model, the author uses the information that he got from the meeting with Li Yuanqiao who was the Vice President of People's Republic of China from 2013 to 2018. This system the author calls China model. So, what is China model? The China model is a Chinese-style vertical democratic meritocracy. We strongly recommend to read this book. It teaches to think critically, to analyze different problems from different angles. This book is not about China, not only about China, it's about everything. It resembles the High School of Economics. We all know that the abbreviation is often interpreted as the High School of Everything.